Welcome to Behind Closed Doors, the latest episode, another special one. We've got another special guest. How are you doing, Ryan? How was your weekend? Uh, not too bad, mate. I'm not going to lie, though. I'm still feeling a bit rough as fuck for Saturday. So, <laughs> 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 um, the old two day hangover, but uh, it was a really good weekend. Um, obviously, up in Aberdeen for the, the Rose game, and it was, uh, it was a brilliant day out. Like, obviously, I didn't get the result, but the boys on the park done themselves and the club proud and uh, overall it was a absolutely magic but messy day out um, well day and night out because it we, we all went back to the pub when we got back to Bonnerig so it was a late one but aye so I was a wee bit hungover yesterday we'll not talk about the result uh, the, the girls yesterday um, but I still toiling a wee bit of day out, to be honest what about you? Um, yeah for pretty good to be honest I was a bit worried on Saturday I was going to end up Without a game, uh, sat just a lot of call offs and uh, and and Fife at the moment, mm-hmm. uh, waterlog pitches and that, eh? but uh, yeah, apart from that, pretty chill to be honest. Uh, you know, not really much to call out on the snooker front, uh, it wasn't very good uh, on Sunday night, but yeah, not 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 too bad. Um, so we, we talk about the football, I think the first thing I want to mention, obviously, you were at you're up at Pitodre. And you took, Boy Rose took up nearly nine hundred, up to Aberdeen, which is which is incredible. Uh, completely packed out the, the away end or the away cage. The cage is actually gone now. I was quite surprised. Is that before or after the the Rose fans went up? <laughs> <laughs> we, we we pulled it in. <laughs> yeah, that's. A... <laughs> That's superb. But, but so, no, um, I brilliant, brilliant support. There was obviously the supporters club put four buses on. Um, the community club put a few buses on as well for like the academy kids to go up and that. And um, I think there was maybe a couple of mini buses and all the people obviously went by train and car as well. So brilliant support and everybody had a great day out. As I said, we were, the buses were booked into a pub before it and the place was bouncing with the tunes on. It was just, I think everyone had a great day. Yeah, no, it looked it looked good. Um, from what I saw, um, for me, I, I managed to get to one game on Saturday. Uh, original plan was Crossgates Primrose versus Socky Juniors, um, and I had everything mapped out. I knew which pub I was going. To. I had all the times sorted, and then obviously got called off. So I had to look around. Um, a lot of the other games that were on were off. Uh, so like Hill of Beef was off. The usual. They're all on the same route, pretty much. So that if one's off, they're all off. No. Um, but Cowden Beef is on, so um, it's, you know, it's, you kind of get a better replacement, to be honest. So yeah, Cowden Beef were uh, playing at home to East Kilbride, um, you know, taking on the the league leaders. Um, a game that, as I say, it was a, a kind of last minute change of plan, but I'm kind of glad I went. Um, turned out to be a, a pretty decent game, to be honest. Cow to be fair, um, a wee bit, wee bit better than they did in the the cup game as well. Eh? Yeah, I, I think they definitely had a point to prove on Saturday. That's for sure. And the the, the way that um, you know, uh, Callum Elliott had said the team and stuff, they weren't there just to. I, I, they were there to win the game. To be honest, and um, they were really, really good. Um, they actually took the lead. Ewan McPherson gave them the the lead. Um, at one 0 and to be honest, like. Cowden Beef were, in my opinion, they were on top for um, you know large spells in the first half. Um, they were defensively solid. They, I mean, East Kilbride always look a threat. I mean, that there's nothing new there. I mean, they always do anyway. But I thought Cowden Beef done really well to contain them. They restricted their space, um, and they looked like they were in a good position. And then um, obviously the 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 visitors got a goal. Um, Aaron Arnott uh, equalised. Um, which kind of changed it a bit, um, to be honest. And I think, yeah, at that point I was like, right, if, you know, you want, you know, once you've got the lead, you have to either stay in front or get a second. It doesn't happen. So East Kilbride just do what they do, and they started to gradually take over the game and stuff. Um, and then we had uh, Ewan McPherson, so the guy that scored the opener for Cowden Beef. He got. A straight red. Um, I have no idea what for. Um, not no. Uh, I'm not having a pop at the referee. I, I just genuinely don't know what it was for. Um, it must. I must have just missed it in the blink of an eye. But um, 
yeah, with the extra man and and being you know obviously level at one all, all eyes were on Daramola, um, and he just you know he was he was just unbelievable. Eh? Um, obviously he got his goal. It was coming. Um, he had put them under the def- like the Cowden uh, defense was under a lot of pressure, and it was just a matter of time before he found a crack eh? and mm-hmm. he slotted that away. You know, cool as you like, and uh, they were managed to see the game out. So. Um, you know, a good comeback from East Kilbride, who were certainly up against it, but thought Cowden Beef uh, gave a really good account of themselves. Um, we're we're talking about like where they need to get to and what level they need to be at. I think Saturday was a good display. Mm. Um, around if, if you know if you want to be at that, you know if if they want to see themselves up at the top end of the table, you need to be giving teams like East Kilbride a tough game when they come over. And I thought they. They more than achieved that, eh? So certainly no, no, uh, no shame in that. Ah, no, absolutely. I mean, you you made a good point at the start that they were probably out to to prove a point after that six 0 defeat in the cup. Um, it sounds like they've done that. The narrow defeat to the lead, as you said, sounds like they were unfortunate. Um, but when you've got the firepower that he's got, pretty tough, like especially TV Darmo, it's it's going to be difficult to keep them out, eh? But I'm sure Callum Elliott will take all the positives for that, and hopefully it's a. I was going to say hopefully a result, no result. Hopefully a performance that they can uh, they can build on. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, as, as I say, it's um, they're still. I think you know, Cowden and Beef. They're not in the kind of league position they want to be, mm-hmm. and in my opinion, not the league position they deserve to be. I think they're you know they're sitting thirteenth in the league. I don't think they're the thirteenth best team in that league personally. Slightly biased point of view, but um, I would agree. I, I think they should be a lot higher up, eh? But yeah. that's that's the nature of the league, eh? So, um, but yeah, I guess that it probably. Um, oh, there's anything you wanted to call it from the weekend? I mean, you already kind of mentioned, you know, Aberdeen, but uh, um, nah, not particularly. But just on, on the game that you were at there, when I seen that Aaron Arnott scored for East Kilbride, I was I was chuffed. Um, he was a big fan's favourite at Bonnerick last season when he was on loan, so. Top player and really good to see him um, getting a goal. But yeah, to be honest, mate, uh, as I said to you before we started recording, I only really had a, a look through the the weekend's results today because I was was absolutely mad with it on Saturday. So <laughs> 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 I didn't really see it, what what had happened. Um, but now I've 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 had a look through some of the results and and um, obviously as you touched on, the weather was rotten, so a lot of the card was off, but. Uh, there was there was one or two we we standouts in, in the in the divisions. I don't know if you want if you had yeah. any mind or if you want to kick off like in the lone league or something. Yeah, so if we start with the the lone league, I guess um, I think the the first one to call out uh, a massive six pointer, uh, Cumbernauld Colts uh, beating Bonesh United two one. Yep. Um, you got you got two teams there that are that have been in that. Like top four, pretty much the whole season, certainly as far as I'm aware. Um, so that would have been, you know, as a, a neutral, that probably would have been one of the picks for Saturday to go and watch. Um, yep. for anyone that was brave enough to try it with the trains with the rugby on and stuff, but um, yeah, that that one's a kind of standout result for me. You know, Cumberland Colts are just, you know, they're going from strength to strength at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, you know, as I say, I think uh, I think the fact that they're sitting second after twenty five games it says it all, doesn't it? Aye, absolutely flying. I didn't notice. I think they got a wee bit of late scare in that one. Um, Ryan Porteous came off the bench and got one and scored a late penalty, and I believe he had a, a really good chance to equalise. But uh, Colts have held on and massive three points. Um, take some three points clear of bonus in the league as well. And for it, like. Or as good as East Kilbride have been, East Kilbride have absolutely smashed it this season, but Cumberland Colts are only 10 points behind them. Um, I know 10 points is qu- quite a lot, and I'm not saying that they're going to catch them, but it's not as a... Like, you would have expected East Kilbride to sort of be absolute runaway winners the way they've the way they've been playing, the results they've been getting, but Cumberland are not too far behind them, um, but uh, they're absolutely flying. Um, the one I noticed, well, that was one of them I noticed, but the other one was Berwick going away to Stirling Uni and winning 2-0. Yeah. Um, 
that, that takes him into the top 10. And obviously we spoke about Berwick on the first or one of the early episodes that we'd done. And their financial troubles were obviously well documented, but they lost a lot of players. They've obviously got Liam Buchanan back. They've added in a few other players, a couple of loans from higher divisions and stuff. And they're actually doing really well at the moment. So fair play to them getting in the top 10 and, and going to fourth bank and beating a really strong Sterling Uni team as we we talked Sterling Uni up last week as well um, in terms of how good they are. So to go there and win 2-0 is a, a brilliant result for Berwick um, in Tam Scobie. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And Berwick Rangers, you know, again, as you called out there, you know, given the, the issues they had earlier in the season, I certainly wouldn't expect them to be where they are in that league. Um, I think they've done really well and as you say I, I don't know if they've had new investment or they've managed to steady the books but I think you've seen a big difference since Liam Buchanan came back and certainly in the results Aye, no, that his experience and the goals that he'll score for them are invaluable so I think I don't think there would have been a I think everybody of a Berwick Rangers persuasion would have been absolutely devastated when he left so to get him back um, is a, a massive boost for them those were really yeah. the only... Sorry, mate, on you go. Yeah, no, I think that's... I mean, you're right, it probably is about it. I think the other thing, just as a slight call out, Cali Braves, right? We've been kind of Aye. talking about how they're on the rise and we're starting to, you know, start to see the kind of, I guess, the proof in the pudding, um, them beating Hearts B2-1 at Lions Park. They're now, um, yeah, they're the only one point outside the top 10 now. So, again... Um, not a big surprise, but they seem to be on a an upward trajectory at the moment. They seem to be going going the right place. They're a team that I think kind of fly under the radar a wee bit, just go about the business quietly, but really, really good side. Um, I think I mentioned a few weeks ago as well with Hearts loaning a couple of their um a couple of their better players in that squad out. Would that kind of have an impact? And I think it seems to it has done. They've hit a wee bit of slump in form. They were obviously yeah. flying, but they've had a wee bit of slump in form. Um, it's to be expected. We saw that last season when they had some of the, the sort of bigger players getting called up to the, the first team and um, the squad, the, the sort of 11 that we're putting out every week was having to be chopped and changed. So second half of the season, it seems to be kind of similar story for them. But um, by taking it away for Cali Braves, it's still a really good result. Yeah, fantastic result, but I, I think you're right. I think Hearts are, um, I wouldn't say depleted, but they are well, certainly not as strong as they were. And I think a lot of those young guys, it'll probably take them a few games to, to kind of get used to it. Um, it is a big step up. A lot of these, I mean, a lot of the guys that have stepped in will be moving up from straight from youth football to playing against seniors. So <laughs> um, they get a bit of a rude awakening when they play some of these teams, as you can, can say. Definitely. Um, so I think I think that's everything on the low end. Now, east of Scotland, right? I mean, there not not many games survived. Um, so we can probably just have a quick scan and just see what results kind of stand out. So if you look at the Premier Division, uh, only three games survived. Um, what was the the standout there for you? Um. It's probably a standout for how tight it was and how unlucky the home side um, appeared to be, and we'll maybe touch on it later on where next guest. But Pennycook losing out one 0 to Broxburn um, to a solitary Errol Douglas goal. That was always going to be a really really tough tie for for Pennycook. Um, Broxburn, we know how well they're doing, but just losing it by the one goal sounds like they were they were quite unlucky there. But again, the Broxburn Broxburn uh, title charge just. Showing no signs of stopping. Um, Musselburgh winning 4 0 against Inverkeevens, a, a good win. They, they've obviously got a couple of games in hand on Hutchie, I think, so they could find themselves um, back into second place quite soon if they keep up the form that they're on. Um, just a wee note on, I noticed Craig Stevenson um, got another goal, so that takes him to double figures for the season. So for a defender, fantastic. I know he does score, he takes penalties, but I think he's, he has scored quite a lot of. Um, goals out with penalties as well, so fair play to him, aye. Yeah, and just, I guess, there's only one other game to call it, may as well call it out, Hutchie Vale, uh, 2-0 on aye. the road against Haddy as well. Um, a good result for them as well, keeps but, them hot but, on the tail. But to, 
back to winning ways for them. So after yeah, definitely say, after Tynecastle beat them last week, so they'll be glad to get back on. Uh, back to winning ways, not an easy place to go down at Haddington, so fair play to them as well. Yeah. Um, just going down, I mean, we can probably cover more than we normally do. So, first division, only well, there was only two games lined up anyway. Um, big one that probably stands out, um, you know, Whitburn Juniors playing against Kemlin, Kemlin winning 1 0, um, keeps them firmly, well, keeps them at top of the league by by one point, but they've still got two games in hand compared to Nutton. Um again, like the the you know, Kemlin are are gonna be it's good, you know, Kemlin, Nitton and Dunny Pace seem to be there but they're gonna be thereabouts right till the end. Uh and we'll see once all the the teams have caught up on their games for what the, the true picture is, eh? But um Kemlin just look like a team that are gonna con- continue to push on and make it really difficult for Teams that are trying to, you know, win that league basically. I came on at a top side. Um, seen them the most recent time I seen them was at Arniston mentioned before, and I don't think they were even at their best that day, and they were still really, really good. Um, seen Greg Wild got his first goal for the club. In that yeah, that um, game as well. So, um, it just shows players, players like him, the caliber of players that they've got, like Greg Wild, who was playing League Two football um, last season potentially even at the start of this season. I can't remember when he signed, if it was right at the start or if it was a wee bit into the season. But I again came on with as as you say, with the two games in hand, they're um that's they're in pole position at the moment. Um I still believe that Nitton done a pace and uh, maybe one or two others will give them a right good right good challenge. So That'll be an interesting sort of last couple of months, last two, three months of the season. Just watching those teams at the top battling it out. Um, the other one in that league, Kerrick Watt, uh, beating Whitehill 1 0. Massive result for them. Um, take some kind of clear of the bottom three, Kerrick Watt. But not a great result for Whitehill. Um, they're dangerously close to that, that bottom three now. Um, I think they're just outside on goal difference. So Whitehill going through a wee bit of a mixed. Time at the moment, um, obviously I've saw them a couple of times recently uh, at Nitton, where I thought they were actually really good, but they were unfortunate to lose. And then the week after, I saw them hammer on us. Them they they were outstanding, but then since then they've kind of went on a wee bit of slump as well. So a wee bit of inconsistency from them, but I'm sure they've got enough quality in that side to to get away from the the relegation zone. I think. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you say, it is tight and uh, our thing to consider our lock or welfare. I've got three games in hand over Whitehill, so that could get a bit nervy uh, down there. Not a good place to be. Certainly don't want to be Aye. with teams below you uh, on the same points, but with games in hand. But um, I'm I'm sure Whitehill welfare will be fine. They just want to get back into their stride again. There's, there's obviously well, them and Honest and are sitting 12th and 13th respectively, dangerously close to that relegation zone. So two Midlovian clubs um, in a pos- positions where they, they don't want to be. As you say, Whitehill in the unfortunate position where the team below them, i.e. local welfare, have got games in hand on them. But Honest and I've got a wee bit of cushion where they've got games still to play. So hopefully um, as a... With Lovey and Resident, hopefully both of them will, will be fine, but aye, not where they want to be at the moment. No, we'll, we'll see what happens there. <clears throat> um, in the second division, again, only two games survived. A uh, big one that stood out for me, um, Edinburgh College beating Stirling Uni 2-1 um, away from home. Um, Edinburgh College, you know, a team that started the season really, really well, and they looked like they were going to be uh, one of the front runners for promotion, and then they started, you know, getting they were losing a lot of games, um, and they fell down. Um, I'm wondering if obviously beating Stirling Uni, who've, you know, they've they've lost quite a few games this season, but they they've shown an, enough promise. You know, they, they they're I mean, they're top five yeah. for a reason. They're a decent side. I'm wondering if Edinburgh College will, will try and get back into that um, run of form they had at the very very start of the season because. Um, again, it's baffling to me how they're sitting seventh in that table. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
they they did make a really good start to the, the league and that's that's a, a really, really good win from them at the weekend. Still in Union, um well they're east of Scotland side, they're a bit of check on Hyde side. I mean looking at the table, they've played twenty games, they've won ten and they've lost yeah. ten. So they just they don't yeah. draw games. They 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 either brilliant and, and, and win them or they or they lose when you when you kinda of expect them to win it. But I suppose what like they're they're obviously five points behind um of the top three, but the kind of worrying thing for them is the, the amount of games that they've played compared to everyone else. They've played the yeah. most games in the league, 20. Edinburgh South, who are three points behind them, have played seven games less. Um, so <clears throat> we could potentially see Edinburgh South leapfrogging them. And Edinburgh College have obviously got a game in hand on them as well. So um, we've been three points behind as well. So th- there's there's teams, particularly from the capital there in South and College, that are right on the, the heels of Sterling Uni, but they're, they're a top side. But the thing with Sterling Uni as well, and I think we've touched on it before as well, um, regarding the, their team, like, is it their strongest team every week? Is that why they're probably a bit inconsistent? I either had 10 wins, 10 defeats. Um, like with Uni sides, obviously, around about sort of the Christmas period, you've got probably boys away home. Um, or if Chris Geddes' first team's maybe short in some areas, he might, uh, call some boys up to the bench or even into the first team so I'm assuming I think that's probably why there's that bit of inconsistency there and they've and, and they've lost quite a lot of games Yeah I, I, I totally agree I mean it's but well, they've got the same thing with the uh, you know um, Sterling Uni's ones in the low end league you don't know which team's going to no. play each given week do you know what I mean so I suppose um, I suppose that's testament to the likes of Chris Geddes and the the manager of the um, the twos that the jobs that they're actually doing. Yes. When yeah. when they face those difficulties, and I know people all say about they train full time and stuff, and they've got that advantage over other teams. But if you're if you're constantly having to chop and change your side, and you've got players missing, if you're if you're planning training sessions, and then you you've not got guys available for the weekend, it's it makes it difficult. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think. I mean, there's there's literally no third division games. Anything nice. that stands out to you in the cup games? Uh, at least a few of those uh, went ahead. Aye, um, as you said, the third division was wiped out. There was only three fixtures, but there was none on. Um, there was a few cup games on. Um, Done a pace getting a one 0 win in East of Scotland qualifying cup against St Andrews. Um, another in the King Cup. Uh, there was a first round game and there was uh, quite a few second round ties. The first round tie, Font and Hibs, a team that we spoke about a lot. Heart Hill Royal is another team that we spoke about a lot. So Heart Hill hosted Font and Hibs uh, and the away side won 3 uh, 1. So again, just continuing their excellent form. Um, wasn't it quite the five goals that they scored last week, but I'm sure they'll take it. Um, I know they are. A division above, but we've spoke about Hart Hill before in terms of how they they do kind of like a week up upset. So that could have been a potential banana skin for for Font and Hibs, but they've got the job done. Um, one thing I noticed, I, and I just I remember I've seen I'm, I've seen them play a couple of times like against Darniston in East Houses, but Font and Hibs got a centre back um, called Stuart Drummond, and he seems to score every single week. Uh, he scored. <laughs> he scored again at the weekend, and I noticed they got man of the match as well. Uh, I'm sure he scored in at least one of the two games that I just mentioned that I've I seen. Uh, I'd love to see how many goals he's on for a centre half, but yeah, really, really big win for good win for Font and Hibs there. There was obviously the King Cup second round, as I just said as well. Big three-two win for Aniston. Um, Mark Anderson there on the goalie that I spoke about last week who was excellent against Nitton saved an early penalty looked like a bit of a mental sort of last five minutes in that one I was just looking at the, the scoring um, it was I think there was two goals and a red card after the 90th minute so certainly quite an entertaining game or certainly an entertaining five minutes added on time uh, another one just to, to call out as well. Obviously, our friend of the show, Sean G. Off Guiney, <laughs> scoring in a, a 4 0 win for Nitton at the weekend as well. So, 
and I think, I think you shared this penalty as well, but some penalty, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, it was different like, class, yeah. Like that state hit, that's how you take a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> like two, two, two keepers are only saving that. Yeah, that's but, one to bookmark for anyone that wants, that wants to learn how to take a penalty. It was class. Just proper laces through it, roof of the net. Yeah. That was in, class. In, so. in, in that game as well, I noticed the, the um, young Fraser Sutherland, the young striker, scored after about 11 seconds. So that's got to be surely, I don't know if that's a record breaker, but surely got to be one of the quickest ever goals scored. Um, not just by knitting, but in the league or in that cup in general. Is that straight from straight from the kickoff, or is it like a couple of touches? I wonder if that's. It was, um, aye, there was a few touches, like there was a f- two or three passes straight from kickoff, right, like into the box. And to be fair, he's taken he's taken it well, but I don't I don't think any Coldstream players even got a touch of the ball before the the <laughs> ball was in the back of the net. So disastrous start for them, but, um. Great response for Nitten after the Derby defeat last week, obviously. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, they'll be happy with that. And then just a quick uh, call out, obviously, the defending champions, Lockhart Welfare, uh, they won 3 0 away at Blackburn United. So they're still in the mix. They've still got a chance of retaining their their uh, cup. So, um, yeah, it's good that they got through as well. They're probably- like that. So they're probably right. absolutely gutted that that wasn't a league fixture, eh? Because I think Blackburn are obviously above them in the league. So to go to go to Blackburn and win three 0 that would have taken them out of the relegation zone if if they if that was a league fixture. But it's uh, they they host Arniston uh, this weekend, so that'll be a decent game. Yeah, I mean, like you say, I mean, I like Lockhart. They need to win more games in the league. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, but. That's just it's a, a problem with the teams at the bottom end of that table. They're all scrapping it out, try to win games, eh? But um, yeah, I think that that covers the the games from the weekend that survived. Um, we're just going to do a, a kind of quick debate, talk about something a bit different uh, this week. And um, I was going to talk about you know how good fan base is for lower league clubs. Um, so not just non-league. I mean, certainly for for non-league clubs, it's an absolute luxury having effectively a, a a ticket office, an e-ticket office um, available and you don't, you know, it must save them so much hassle as well having to deal with cash if everyone used it. No. But I, I was, um, like this Friday, I'm going to um, like Dundee United or, or the, well, Rafe Rovers are playing Dundee United, so it's on the TV and stuff, but I want to go because it's a Starks Park and it'll be decent. So I had my ticket and stuff and then uh, yeah, my, basically my, my my seat. I got a, an email from Ray Rovers basically saying that they're trying out a new kind of standing area for the singing section. So unfortunately, we need to move your seat and stuff. And they asked, you know, where where I want to go. And then they said, where do you want to be near? I said, I'm not fussed. Just anywhere in that stand. She took care of it. She refunded like my old, like my previous booking. I moved my seat, and then I got a new ticket. And all I had to do is tap a button, and that's it done. And I'll get refunded and the new one goes through. And it just made me think, it's like, some, you know, there's clubs, right? Even, right, I think about the Fairmont Athletic, right? They were playing Airdrie a few weeks back and I had loads of friends mm-hmm. about to go and it got, got postponed and we're still waiting for a refund and stuff. And they don't use fan base, right? They they do the things the old school way. No. They do it all through a ticket office. And then you think, you know, Rafe Rovers, the championship club, are using fan base. You think about like a lot of these clubs in the non-league, the benefits they get from using fan base as opposed to either try and run their own tickets website, which can go down if there's too much traffic or whatever. Um, but yeah, we just what were your thoughts on fan base? Because personally, I absolutely love it. <clears throat> I am in the exact same boat as you. Um, I think it's an absolute godsend. I mean, don't get me wrong. Especially at non-league games, you're going to get a large proportion of punters that are old school and they want to pay by cash. That's absolutely fine. But a lot of people, certainly these days, will play, pay, uh, pay by card. Like How many times do you see like people commenting on like teams posts saying they accept card? Um, so when it comes to fan base, and usually the teams that use fan base advertise it quite well as, as well. Yeah, um, the app itself is really user friendly, so you'll know yourself. You can go into it, and it shows you a list of all the clubs that are on fan base. 
So you can yeah. bas- you can basically add those clubs to like your favourites. So I do that. Like I know, for example, like Edinburgh Uni use fan base. Um, yeah. And I get to quite a few Edinburgh Uni games because it's quite local. So I have them added on my favourites. So it's literally just fire it up, shows you the latest game, you click on it. I think uh, you use like Apple Pay to pay for it. So you just literally click a button and that's your ticket. But um, so in terms of actually securing your ticket, it's an absolute doddle. Um, and then when it comes to actually going through the turnstile as well, it's really no different to paying with your card. Yeah. Like, um, you just get your ticket up on the screen and the boy scans it and that's you in the door. Um, it's a bit of bug bear in mind. Like sometimes when you go to the ground, you're trying to get in and people are like faffing about with change and stuff and that. Um, a lot of a lot of grounds as well. I've noticed. I've started doing like uh, separate turnstiles, so like cash turnstile and then fan base turnstile. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. I want to say Hutchie do that. I might be wrong. Um, I'm not sure they do. I know Cowden and Beef definitely do that. So I can't remember where it was, but anyway, it was. So again, just for efficiency, um, it just makes it. For, for like the paying punter, it just makes it a lot easier. Um, I I'm a massive fan. Of it. I would like to see more clubs. I I don't know the ins and outs in terms of if there's like a cost associated. I'm assuming fan base takes some sort of commission. Yeah. So I don't know how viable it is for a lot of clubs, but a lot of non-league clubs use it. So, and a lot of these non-league clubs are not exactly cash rich. So the whatever sort of commission they need to pay or whatever charge um, they need to pay it can be a, a massive amount um, yeah I mean say for, see for example see for like going back to the Bonnie and Gabardine game the only way you could get a ticket with that for that was in person mm-hmm. um, which is fine for a lot of people but we obviously took a massive support but I reckon could we have taken a bit of bigger support if people had access to I know, I know this is, it's an away game, so it's, it's a bit different. It would be Aberdeen that would be on fan base, but um, for home games, home cup games, for example, or just home league games, I reckon it would be beneficial. I'd like to see, I'd like to see more clubs um, invest in it. Yeah, and just yeah, going back, definitely. going back to your, going back to your Rafe scenario. Like again, the efficiency there is unbelievable. You've, you've not had to really do anything. Whereas I guess with the Dunfermline situation, you're having to chase them, and it's. Um, Stuff like that. I think I'm sure I, I bought a muscle bra ticket on fan base last season and the, the match was postponed. Um and I just sent them a direct message on Twitter. Um basically just asking what, what the script is, what would happen with that. Um yeah. I was planning on going when it was rescheduled anyway, and they basically they came back to me really quickly and said, because uh, the ticket disappeared off the fan base. So I was like, What's happened? My ticket's gone, but the match didn't go ahead. Well I get my money back or and they basically says when, like, in, as the sort of rearranged fixture approaches, your ticket will just reappear again, so you can just use it as and when. But if you want a refund, just contact us and we'll refund you. So again, it's just it just seems so much more efficient and, and user friendly. Yeah, big time. I, again, I, I don't know the the costs for clubs, so I won't really stipulate. But I wonder if it's less than the cost of every time you tap your card anywhere, you the there maybe. The the charge of maybe twenty twenty five percent. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's if it's less than that. Um, I don't know if some clubs, you know, they offer card payment, but they don't offer fan base. If they're potentially paying more, um, doing it that way, I don't know. But if clubs in the championship are using that, then it just shows you because I mean, Rafe Rovers have a ticket office mm-hmm. and they're using fan base. Aye. So they have they have someone that deals with like as I say I got an email through through someone that works at Rafe Rovers who's looking after that. But I remember I used to go to football games and you used to have to call up and like Aye. you know give your details over the phone no, or you had to like put an order in and literally go and collect it. Do you know what I mean? It's it's you know nowadays you can be literally on your, on the bus on the way to the ground. You can you'll have your card details saved and you can just sort your ticket there and then and go straight through the turnstile. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Um I and if a club as big as Rafe are using it, then there's clearly a a benefit to it. I come back to your point there about how many phone up, I remember that, like phoning up Tynecastle ticket office. 
like sitting in a queue praying that you were going to get through before they sold out. Like, aye, I'm glad yeah, enough just... to do that these days. So I more more clubs need to get on on the likes of fan base. I think big time makes their lives easier and it makes everyone else's life easier as well. Totally. I mean, so delighted to welcome our second guest onto the the podcast, the Penny Cook Athletic Gaffer, the man himself, Lewis Colt. How are you doing, Lewis? All good, guys. Nice to be on the show, and thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on, mate. Thanks for coming on. You came highly recommended by our, our last guest, Gainey. <laughs> says, uh, <laughs> say, says you'll, you should have a few stories for us, and you've you've uh, certainly had a you've had a I'm good career as well. I know, so. I know the ones you're talking about, and I know I'll get a buy. <laughs> this is this is going to kill me because the guy still doesn't know what I've done it to him. This is going to end. <laughs> well, I'm really close to him. Listen, we we're all for good stories, but we don't want you to tell any stories that'll get you into trouble. So. Uh, listen, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Good man, good man. But now, we'll, similarly, what we've done in the last episode, we'll we'll just kind of we'll we'll touch on obviously where you're at the moment with Pennycook, but we'll just kind of go back to the the start and where it sort of all began for you. Mm-hmm. Um, growing up in Clary, um, mm-hmm. obviously a big jambo, as I'm sure everyone will be aware. Of, and started your career at Arts as well in mm-hmm. the, the youth team. Aye. So how was that? It must have been a bit of a dream starting your career at your your boyhood heroes. It was fantastic, you know, the dream is always as a kid and still my dream now at 35 year old, you know what I mean, to always play for Hearts first team, you know. And I was lucky enough to go in the academy at nine o'clock, uh, nine o'clock, nine, uh, nine year old and <laughs> I wish it was nine o'clock, <laughs> nine year old and obviously worked my way through there. You know, it was brilliant working under some great managers. Who were the, so, see when you were there, was that around about the, the Romanov era? Just yeah, just going into the Romanov era, obviously before they obviously went into like obviously Lee Wallace and Callum Elliott, um, Egan, that were all the year, a couple of years above me, but we uh, never quite made it there. Then obviously went on to Hamilton, where I kind of established myself a bit. Aye. Um, so I was going to ask that who were the sort of big players when you were at Hearts? So the likes of Lee Wallace. Um... Lee, Lee was always a year above me at school and things like that. So I know Lee quite well. You know, Aye. he's still he's just down the road from me. So I've always kept in touch with Lee. I'm really close with Callum, as you probably know now, you know, during the managerial career. And he's Aye. obviously having a, doing a great job at Cowden Beef, another team that's really close to my heart. Um, I so just players like that, and it's you're always looking up to the Hearts team at the time. It was like even before then, it was like I was, I was Hearts star, so Robbo was always a hero of mine. You know, Alan Johnston, Neil McCann, folk like that, right through to Ricardo Fuller, Mike Tolbert. I still, I st- Mike, <laughs> 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 I was on the Tolbert, mate. Never mind that. <laughs> um, the best player I'll, I'll 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 take I'll take to my grave. The best player I've ever seen in Hearts is Mauricio Pinella. Mar- it was a joke. Uh, what a player. He Unfor- only played like five or six games. Unfortunately, we didn't really get to see the best. Um, obviously, a bit of no. a bad man, I think, but that goal that he scored at Aberdeen was... Unbelievable. He's, um, he had everything, you know. There's a reason he went on for like 20 million after that. You know, he, he went to Genoa, or, or I think he went to Atlanta no. from Genoa, and joint owned by Inter Milan. No. But the guy was, when I say a guy's a genius, the guy was a genius. It was it was a freaking nature to watch him. Superb. And you touched on there, you obviously you moved to Hamilton after that and that's where you kind of established yourself. Mm. Um, senior debut at 17, is that right? Seven, um, I had the worst debut of all time, by the way. I did, I was, just, well, I, was, just... I was going to ask you what your memories of that are, so I'm assuming they're no very happy ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, basically, I got the late call. It was like the, the New Year's Day game, it was a uh, Airdrie Derby. And um, I think I was out the night before. I'm, I'm sure I was. Like, <laughs> this is common back then, but I wasn't in the squad. So, like, like St. James McCarthy, McArthur, training with him every time, all the day. Alec Neal, absolutely fantastic footballers, you know. So, working with him, he, he kind of thought you were ready, but until that call comes from Billy Reid, I was I was never expecting he got in the park. So, I finally got in the park and I had a stinker. I remember having a stinker, but it got worse. By the way, I've had a career of stinkers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember going up for a header. And I think it was like, was it Paul Lovren or it was Chalky McManus? You know, big Alan McManus played with hearts, big Chalky. He was an evil big guy to play against. And I'm I'm six foot four, but I was built like the side of a SIM card. And I still kind of am. <laughs> so I had, no, I had no meat on my shoulders, you know. I was honest, I was about two stones soaking wet. So I've, I've tried to jump early. So I jumped early and I felt a tug on my shoulder for having, hey, I was either, it's Paul Lovren or Chalky at pulled his. And I landed on my shoulder and my shoulder got stuck underneath my collarbone. Oh. I was only about eight minutes of coming on, so I went on to the biggest reception. I think I got a bigger reception when they had to take me back <laughs> off. <laughs> you oh. know, but um, never quite worked out for me at Hamilton. But um, Billy Reid is somebody who I've always got to thank for giving me my career debut. Ah, that's it. And you, you mentioned there you, you were training with the McCarthy's. 
was it I take it it was evident early doors that they were they were class oh, and they were James they were James McCarthy move. definitely James McCarthy eighteen year old was like a forty year old man. Aye. He was just so so calm. He was just he like if even if you, he's the type of guy if you went out for a drink with him we'd have a cup of tea. That <laughs> kind of guy, you know that kind of feeling you get about him. Aye. Nicest guy ever. James McCarthy came for us because he was released at Livingston. And uh, he went in the first team at 15. I think Billy was even taking him out of school for Castle Milk on a Friday afternoon to give him some sort of basically bring and do shape for him because he was going to play on the Saturday. When I say a freak nature, there's levels. There's always levels in games. We talk about mm-hmm. good players, but then you get players at levels. And these two guys are multi millionaires due to the talent they had. But you know, must first and foremost, they worked hard for it as well. Great guys, and they get all my respect for working hard. Superb. Um, I, you mentioned there it didn't quite work out at Hamilton. Was it a lone spell at Alloa? Lone um, spell at Alloa. Actually done quite well at Alloa under Alan Maitland. And, uh, but it's, it's well documented. My, my mind away from football was never the strongest mind. You know, I'm, I'm nah. very honest about it. Football for me was a game I loved, but I took I, I took it for granted. I def, Jeff and definitely did. And it's, do I regret anything I've done in my life? No, thanks. I've had a, probably a, bit, a career better than most than anyone else's. You know, like obviously at top level, a bit different, but people out there will say, ah, this and that, you should have done this and that. I should have done this and that, but I still won better than them. Exactly. So I'll live by that, you know. Um, could it have been a lot different? 100%. Is it anyone's fault but mine? No, but I'm, I'm at peace with that. Listen, there's probably there's probably hundreds of guys in, in the same boat as you. Um, at the time, you didn't quite appreciate mm. the position that you're in, and it's not until you, you look back on it and reflect on it that you think, you could have done that wee bit better, but you, you hit the nail on the head there. People that are criticising you for things that you could have done better. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, you've had a better career than they have in football. So, one hundred percent. I don't take it. I don't take it personally. You know that. Like, I don't. I think it's a. Uh, it's kind of at least not like the the hundred the club the confidence come and speak to me about it. And Aye. some of them are not like I wish oh, you should have done this and that. They'll be like, if you just stuck in a little bit more, if you just done this a little bit, we'll dedicate yourself a little bit more. And I'll turn around and say, to them, you're one hundred percent right, mate. But they'll get ones that get a couple of to get at the pubs and things like that. I'll get a wee bit nippy yeah. with you and things like that. You're like that. I guess, and I'm like, oh, you know what, mate? That's fine. Your, your opinion means nothing to me, regardless. But you know, it's it's something I wish I did was sticking a wee bit more. But to regret, no, one hundred percent, I don't. Quite right, mate. Quite right. And after that, you went to Berwick. And am I right in saying did did you play with Robbie Long at Berwick? I played with Big Robbie. I played Aye. with Big Robbie at uh, Berwick. Robbie was fantastic. You know, I went in with Berwick when they just got promoted, but they weren't really a they were weren't establishing themselves in the league above, you know. It was hard. I was only about 17 or 18 as well. And as I say, they're big physical boys that are fighting for every point down there. And I wasn't quite ready. And my debut at Berwick, I did really, really well. I set up too. I can remember it clear as day. I think it was, was it Breakin or Air United? I think it was one of the two I played against. I set up the boy Ian Dyack for two. Mm-hmm. Then he chucked me the next game week and I just collapsed <laughs> again, you know. I wasn't quite ready, you know. I no, wasn't I... quite ready. Um, going back to my Alamo one, uh, this, this is a moment that sticks out for me in my game. I had all the ability, believe it or not. See, for somebody that's six foot four, people talk about you target man's and that. I had actually good feet mm-hmm. and I was ability, natural ability things that came to me. And a good friend of mine, Kieran McInnesby, was at Hearts. So, you know, Kieran? Aye, he was at St Johnston so, as well. Eh? St Johnston as well. He went to Fulham for a million pounds. Aye. Um, best pals of Lewis Hart, believe it or not. He'll tell you every time he speaks to you as well about that. <laughs> but um, Kieran, I thought Kieran had in for me and it wasn't until I actually sat down. And one thing that kind of changed my whole perception of football, we're in training and we're doing a, pa- a simple passing and Passing um, into the striker, play off, strike. Simple as that. And I went to do it, jogged up to the ball, passed it, laid off, boom, stuck it. Honestly, it could still be, it could be in the North Sea. It could go, <laughs> honestly. And I went, I didn't even care, man. I didn't even care. And Kiri Mack and SB goes, that's always going to be a problem, son. Aye. And for then, and I still thank Kiri for it to the day, like I still do. And he goes, mate, this is just me giving my, my honest opinion of you. Waste, waste, waste. And it's something I'm really close to Kieran now for it, and it's something I always respect for what I'm saying because if there was a changing point slightly in my football, I put it down what Kieran said to me. Sometimes you just need that sort of honest wee word in the ear, just to... exactly. The guys played Aye. in the, uh, the Premier League, you know. What I mean, how can you argue with the guy? Aye. You know, and it's, be... you do take it for granted. It's true. You're you're going to listen to somebody with that sort of experience, eh? so you've got to. But you're 18 year old, you know, you're full of everything. I think you're the man, and it's it's hard. Aye. Well, you said you start. You're a, you're a young boy at the time. You didn't really think about the things till you got a bit older, and more experienced. Eh? But, yeah. Um, what was uh, obviously you're a striker. Rob, Robbie Horn was a centre half. What was he like to play against in training? They smash you a few times. Or... 
<laughs> Robbie's a bit nice. You know yourself. You were obviously yeah. with Bonnie Riggs and things like that. Robbie's the nicest big guy in the world. You know, he'll never say boot a ghost or anything like that. As a player, I think he was very hard done by yeah. at Hearts. When yeah. boy, he, was, he was much appreciated at Hearts, you know. And for me, somebody to play with and see him doing so well in the Bonnie Riggs team and how he's came through the stage is something that I've got to look at to maybe do him myself. So Robbie, as a player, was fantastic. And I fingers crossed for everything goes right for him to go become a fantastic manager as well. Listen, you, you've had sort of similar paths in a way, like coming through at Hearts, being at Berwick, mm-hmm. now sort of going into management in the yeah. east of Scotland side. So hopefully, fingers crossed, your your management career will go in a similar That's trajectory. <laughs> nah, fingers crossed, man. You never, you never know. As I say, I'd, uh, I don't get too high just now. I don't, don't get too low. I'm just taking it all in as it comes just now, learning my trade. Quite right. Um, after Berwick... I know it's the other wee short spell. I went, Miami. To, I went to Miami. I had, that was I went to Miami All Stars. So Miami All Stars. My dad's my dad was living in Florida, and um, I went over there for a holiday. Ended up staying inside for Miami All Stars, who are now, believe it or not, are owned by FC Miami. They went past and FC Miami are now the owners of that. Um, it was good. It was really good. Not many see down in Miami. It's not many English speaking folk. There's a lot of Hispanics and things like that. Right. But it was doggy, doggy. It's spat on and things and training them and things on. They going right. It was just that cultural kind of thing. Um, ability wise it was honking at the time Aye. but you're playing against folk like I remember playing a friendly and Juan Pablo and Gail was playing for the team the ex filler player Aye. you know yeah. it's, it's things like that and it was um, it was crazy to actually think that but you know look at the MLS now the money they've got in America is, is massive obviously the Messi endorsing it Beckham endorsing it and things like that and uh, it's good to see in Miami are doing well now Aye, it's night and day to what it was before eh? but that must have been some some change going for, for Clary to Miami. That's, that's... Well, said, Costa Del Clary will do me every Costa Del Clary. Than, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it, was, it was good. The weather was great. You had to actually train at like six o'clock in the morning. Then you had night. the whole morning and afternoon off and you come back at night. It's not really for me. It was more that I like to get in get out as quick as I can. This is night. why my football group all didn't go well. I wanted to get in there as quick as I can and be the first one out. So for all you young boys that are watching, don't do that. Be the first, be the first out and the last out. Do you think going abroad um, actually helped your career at that point? Do you think maybe stepping away from Scottish football for a bit, trying something um, different? Uh, to be honest, mate, I never went over there looking to play football. I never. I went mm. over there just to chill and get myself away. I think um, it was a more a downtime for me, and I thought I'd never go play football again. I thought I'd never go back and play football. Then it was my pal over there, and his laddie was playing, and I thought, right, I'll go train. Then training leads to this. Then end up signing a short-term deal. Then when that was going, as we wee bit, I wanted to come back home and play again. But I was getting offered, like, the top colleges over there. You know, like, really top colleges. And get, they're, they're bringing in, like, 45, 50,000 to a game. And I'm like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, but it's very it's very different how the style of things are. Like, and it's not really made for me the American style because you're in the gym non-stop. You're in everywhere non Like, you've got to look after yourself. Whereas I remember getting picked up for Lee Maker one day and I had a Burger King in my car and we're going to play I think it was either Celtic or something like that and I'm eating a cheeseburger in the car you know it's like that's the way I live my life Aye. you know it's true I never put on weight I never Aye. put on weight so if I ate that it's better than me not eating at all it was just over there was completely different they're very big physical and mm-hmm. ability wise wasn't a problem but it's more the size the size for great fair play um, and then obviously after your wee spell in America came back did, did you ever be spelling the when amateur before you, you went to... I think I did that and out just to help players out, but I never really <clears> took <throat> football like into training or things like that. I never really joined a team in that until I signed for Arniston. Well yeah, I can, were, you, were you a wee bit of a sort of period in your in your life where you weren't enjoying was, football or to be honest, the when somebody says to me when's the last thing you play, enjoy playing football, I'll probably say playing school football with my pals. No. And that's not that's nothing to do with I hated football and anything like that, but if I really sat down and enjoyed it where I could relax and play, no. I'm looking at school football for that for me as um, the last time I'm playing with my mates and things like that because I was also in an academy at a young age. No. That gets taken away from you. You know, exactly. I, was, I was lucky yep. enough at Craigmount to, to win the, the Scottish Cup. The, I won the Scottish Cup twice that year at the Hearts Boys Club under Gary McKay, who later became my agent. Mm-hmm. And um, I went on to play, I went on to first year and I was blessed with a great first year team that we went on and won the Scottish Cup as well. But then after that was probably the last time I enjoyed playing football, you know. You mentioned there, obviously, you signed for Arniston. Um, 
what's what's the memories of your, your time there? How did you enjoy that? Great. It was brilliant. We were good we're a good young side. I remember uh, we played a we played Trinent in a quarter final a cup or something like that. And the boy Adam Nelson, I think, was playing Aye. at the time. I was born in like one of the two and ads was playing. And he used to call us George Street United because all the others were just pals that went out on George Street on a Saturday night. <laughs> George Street United. <laughs> so so it was like myself, Jordan Cropley, Bear Tomley, Wee Cal. Um there was loads of us in there at the time. It was a fantastic team, but we're just most of us were just out of playing full time football. Aye. So the physicality side of the game probably wasn't ready for us. Mm-hmm. But the game Brian McNaughton and uh, Matt Christie gave us the freedom to just go out and play football. And it's probably the most prolific I've probably been in my career. I was I was I was on like thirty goals before Christmas at one point. Fine. That's when I I, my, I went full time from Arniston, and who weren't even in the Super League or the Premier League at the time, mm-hmm. right into to Cowden Beef where Jim and Nicol took a chance on me. Quite a quite a jump, but as you said, straight back up into the um, mm. professional ranks with with Cowden Beef. And that was a, a top team you were at with Cowden Beef as well. You had the likes of Team Brett was there, weren't they? And, um, <laughs> one of my best like, listen I'll go on to a dear to you later on the story links into Dean Brett later on but uh, you know Dean Brett aye so I'm no, I'm, no sur- I'm no surprised that when there's a funny story that Dean's involved <laughs> oh, see so he is see when you think of funny people or you think of crazy people he is a mix of both of them aye he's hilariously funny he's very <laughs> intelligent and he looks he looks daft but he is one of the funniest guys I've met. Like, I'm still time with you know at Cowden Beef. Um, but like at that team, Colin Cameron was assistant manager at the time when Jim and Nicol was there. Colin Cameron was 42 year old and probably still one of the best players I played with. Aye. The guy was a joke. Mickey was a joke. He was later became a manager, which I'll talk about as well. I was going to ask you what was it? Obviously, again touching on the fact that you're a big big Hearts fan. Colin Cameron is obviously a Hearts legend. Scored the mm-hmm. uh, 98 Cup final. 98 Cup final. Um, what was it like playing with him, sharing a dressing room with him? Just brilliant. We're completely two different people. Ah. Mickey, Mickey is. See, Mickey could, if he wanted to, could not train for two weeks and go out and play on a Saturday, be the best player in the park. He ah. was brilliant. He gave everything. You know, um, it's not until I actually stepped away from County Beef when I think back on Mickey and I think how how great a a great a player he was and mm. what he actually done for me as a manager, which I totally dis- disrespected him at the time. You know, down to my own mistakes and things and. The guy stuck by me and gave me chance after chance, you know, and it's, that's a guy who's won the Scottish Cup, played in the Premier League, you know, taking a chance on myself. And I'm kind of like, I may bother, kind of that attitude, which isn't great. Um, but listen, I've got nothing but high respects and I still speak, I still call him Gaffer when I see him. Aye. And it's that kind of respect I've got for him. Mm-hmm. That's superb. Um, who, who was it? Who was your, the other strikers that counted me for the time? Because that wouldn't have been. That wouldn't have been the likes of Greg Stewart, eh? but that would have been after. I played with him. So, did Greg, you... I'm close with Greg. So, the season that I did really well at Cowdenbeath, it was the season we got relegated. So, I came in the season, I came in in January, we got relegated from the Championship, which was massive for us. Because so, we were hybrid at the time. Only the young boys were full-time. Aye. The older lads were still working. It was like Ludovic Roy, and we had John Dempster, who played junior football. Mark McKenzie, still playing with Pollock. Nice. Um, players like that. They were all the strikers. Greg was there, but Greg was still very, very young at the time. Aye. Greg was younger than me. Greg was only about 18. Uh, then in the last like three months of the season, Greg went on a, go- a goal-scoring run that was incredible. But it was the season after that, myself and Greg Kindy and Kane Hemmings came in, uh, Cal Naismith, and that, they all came to Jordan Martin. So I'm still close with him. I'm really, it's like, I've not spoken to Kane recently, but Kane was at my, 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 my wee girl's christening and things like that. And Greg, I speak to him, I see him at charity days and things like that with Cowden Beef. Um, and it's scary to think, and people see about Greg and Kane, how good they're playing, how good the careers they went on to have. Mm-hmm. See when I was playing, they weren't getting a sniff when I was playing. Now, this, this, uh-huh. is no, this is no, this is no. I don't blur up about myself when it comes to my football. But when I was on it, Kane and Greg were coming off the bench in the place I was number one for a lot of the time. Uh-huh. But from them being there and being a high quality, it pushed me on when I actually think so. I went on to score. I think I got like twenty goals that season when we got promoted back up, and it was um, Greg and Kane and things were all in the squad. Um, how soon in your your Cowden career did the Colin Cameron? When was it he made the move into management? It was the season we won the league. You know, uh, Mickey was assistant there at the time, and Jimmy. I think Jimmy just, I think he was just wanting to do enough. something else. I'm not too sure. I had enough. Yeah, Jimmy's a legend. Nicest guy I'll ever meet. I've had another guy I've got to give a, a lot of respect and thanks to for taking a chance on me and giving me a second chance to have a better career than what I went in with. Um, 
Nicky was brilliant. Lee Makel was brilliant. Doogie Anderson, and now works for the SFA, who was doing all the sports stuff for us. Was fantastic. Everyone at the club, Cows and Beats for me is a club that, set from hearts, is probably, and now also Pennycook, that I hold dear my, my my heart. Cows and Beats in Airdrie to an extent as well, that are the clubs that I kind of look for right after the games and make sure they do well. And it's a, when you look at Cows and Beats now, it's it's a sad story for me. You know, it's the it's what's happened to them. We were in the championship, the, the, we're playing Dunfermline and things, and we're still only getting like 600 people at home. Aye. You know what, the Cows and Beats haven't got a massive fan base, but what they have got, they've got 300 home and away. The loyalty there. Loyal There's a great feel about the club, yeah. And uh, Mr Finlay's obviously, I call him Mr Finlay all the time. Donald was absolutely brilliant, you know, great with me. Um, a very intimidating guy, but uh, a guy who's done so well for Cows and Beast, not just in there, but the community side of things as well. Me and Craig have mentioned on here a lot that there's obviously a few teams that have fallen through that trap door into Lone League from the uh, League 2. But we're of the opinion, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people will be as well, that if there's if there's one at the moment that looks like they've got a, a chance of getting back up, it's probably cow and beef under, under Callum. Under Callum, um, yeah. As I, as I say, I know Callum really well. Callum will be relentless. Callum will get, he will keep going. He'll keep going until he gets it right. Mm-hmm. He's a great manager. Yeah. An absolutely fantastic his, his, rec- his record speaks for itself. Hey, wherever he's been, he's, of he's had success. Of course. I speak to Callum weekly. You know, we're always checking after games and things like that. He's a really nice guy and somebody that I work quite closely with. Um, if anyone does deserve to get Cowden Bees back in there, I hope it does go to Callum. Mm-hmm. Um, the club deserve to be back up in a second chance. At it, you know, so had they got good good endorsements this year from the Via play. They got into the Via play, Aye. which maybe helped them yeah. the cause a wee bit. Yeah. But I've been reading a lot of things on Twitter. And this, is, this kind of links into it. About the, everyone's complaining about Mick Kennedy at East Kilbride buying players, buying players, buying players. So what? If he's getting the money to go do it, I would do it. Exactly. I would certainly do it. You know what I mean? If I had the money to do it, as a manager, you're not... to get out of the league. Aye. The job to get out of the league is to get the better players in the other opposition. Yeah. So for me, if somebody's offering them 500, 600 pounds a week to play football and bring in a better player, why wouldn't you? As a manager, you're not going to turn around and say, no, I don't want him. <laughs> No, exactly. It's better than your opponents. Exactly. So they're going to play Trinent, say, who have got a good squad as well, and they've got a chance of getting a striker that Trinent want as well, but they most likely go East Kilbride and they can afford them. You know, it's 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 a no it's a no brainer for me. Hundred percent. No. But no, I certainly I think obviously that league's getting stronger and stronger, but I think Cowden Beef will in the next um two or three next, years. Two or three years I think they'll They've, they've, yeah. Callum's built a really good squad there already and they're maybe just one or two players away for, um, for he'll, get, he'll get them he'll get the players he will be relentless I remember when he tried to sign Ryan Quinn from me I could not get him off the phone he <laughs> was absolutely I called, I called him Mascarano because he was touch tight for a wee while <laughs> honestly <laughs> honestly I had to check my shoulders every time I was going to the toilet in case Callum was going to tap me on the shoulder but yes that's what he is he almost pesters you into getting them and that's the kind of guy that you need to help. Somebody's going to dedicate his life to, to actually, or dedicate his job to actually getting these players in. Superb. Um, so I obviously we, we mentioned there that uh, Colin Cameron takes the the cow and beef job. I take it was he the manager when this fizzy sweet story happened? <laughs> 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 right, I'll, I'll tell it. Right, this this. Oh, he's going to kill me. He is going to kill me. So me and Dean, as I'm going back to Dean Brett, me and Dean Brett, maybe Scotland, Scotland and is brilliant as well. Scott, but Scott would always get to see if I just like he's one of these affectionate guys. So I travelled with Scotty and John Robertson and things like that. So I'm, if Scotty said to you, you couldn't do it, you couldn't do it, I'm like that, right, that's it. Boom, here we go, I'm doing it. And if you chuck Dean Brett in there, it's like chucking tops on it a fire. Oh. <laughs> so I'm already in the half. I'm one of these strikers, right? I'm not Playing in your starting 11, do not put me on the bench. I will sit there like a spoiled brat on the bench. I have no interest in coming on. I'm wanting to play 90 minutes, and that was it. If I come off after 60, fantastic. So I'm in a half. I'm in a massive half. Oh, I'm not going to say his name now, right? So Dean Brett's here, right in the middle. There's myself. I'm sure it's is it Jamie Stevenson, or I think it's Cal Naismith, one of the two there. And... Craig White, sorry, Whitey, right? the goalkeeping coach. He's over the fraud now, player. <laughs> he was obsessed with these fizzy Haribos, right? And I could see him eyeing them up. And I was in a half, so I'm sitting there like that. I went, Dino, Dino, watch this for these Haribos. I said, I've whispered what I was going to do. Um, I was like, so there's two packets of these Tang Fast Sticks, right? I could see him. His mouth's watering. 
He's like an XL bully. <laughs> I'm telling you. I can see him. He's getting the goalie gloves off. He's ready to go into the bag. <laughs> so I've went on that, you know what, Jess? I've started to lick all the sugar off every single one of them. <laughs> so I've licked them all off. Back into the bag. Right. And obviously, because he's got his goalie gloves on, he's going into the bag, which is unhealthy, the best. He's catching balls and eating Harry Bowls. He's right. bad bite. You deserve it for that, pal, right? <laughs> He's in there. He obviously can't feel that the sugar's off the sweeties. And I swear to God, he's eating them like a like a 90s rave, as you can imagine. <laughs> and I'm like that. I'm sitting there. Dino's got tears in his face, right? And there's flavours coming off. I didn't know if they're mine or if they're his from him. He's been excited, right? <laughs> it gets worse. I've been totally warm up. So I've warmed up and I'm rolling up. I'm honest, my ribs are in bits. I could not move. <laughs> so we're like, I think it's, we're on the lap. So I've been going right on and just basically hold the ball up. I'm playing against Marvin Andrews and Laurie Ellis at a half. They're going up for a ball and I can't even jump. I'm in stitches. <laughs> so I'm going up for the header. I'm laughing my head. Big Mar's looking at me and saying, who's this weirdo? What's he laughing at? I'm looking. I swear to God, I am looking over at the bench. Dino's got the towel over his face and there's Whitey right in every two minutes. <laughs> my goalie comes off, <laughs> chomping these away. My teeth nearly fell out because I licked that much sugar off them. <laughs> it was honestly unbelievable. But just before that, I was that bored, and Dino's like that. We're talking, we're telling jokes like Willie Collum and things like that. Like Willie was ref in the game, and he gave a stupid decision. And I went, Dino, you know what? Is? I've just screamed over in the middle of the park. Fuck you, Willie! <laughs> <laughs> said, Fuck you, Willie! Next minute, he came running over. The gaffers looked at me. Mickey's looked at me. He's like that. I'm like that. I look at you, Brett. What are you doing? I'm like what are you doing? <laughs> it's me. Willie gave me the yellow card. So Dino, it was just a write off at the start. Oh man, the unprofessionalism, bad. Like it was really bad. <laughs> I was a good egg, but a bad egg, if you understand that. You know what I mean? I'd hate to manage me now, but people seem to like my stories because of my stories. You know what I mean? It's the Aye. things I've been involved in. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it how, did, how did he not notice that the... the, 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 the because the goalie gloves on you. Like, he didn't even... Like, he's on his... in his mouth. I think it was raining as well, so he's maybe thinking they're a bit damp. That's <laughs> okay. You know, he was chomping them. Honestly, he was chomping away. I'm surprised he's not got lockjaw. These fizzy oh. cherries and these fizzy cola bottles, honestly, were going down like those, honestly, like a 90s rave. He was just like that. <laughs> it's like sh- like a cartoon, shovel hands like that, like waffling them in. And I'm looking, at, I'm going up for a header to say the puck, and I just see a wolf for these fucking <laughs> animals. <laughs> it was just one of these moments that I've actually forgot about until he mentioned it, until Gainey mentioned it. <laughs> um, but I, Dino, Dino keeps talking about it, I know it's, it was ridiculous. But um, oh, it's very lighty. Super. There's a couple. Of, there's a couple. Of stories. just going back to the Cowden one, right? This is this is a belt. I do this involves Dean Brett. <laughs> so it's a Friday afternoon. It's when that snowstorm was really heavy. Remember that one? A couple of like five, six years, seven years ago. And he's like, "That's right, young lads." And obviously, get us over at the gym for your induction. The guy's got Peter for induction over there. So you've got Tam O'Brien, you've got Robbo, you've got Scotty Linton, Dean Brett, Liam Gall- uh, Liam Callahan, Lewis Mill. They all walk over. Gaffer calls me in the office to go over things and like, well, we'll just meet you over there. I'm just going to go over, go over with Big Kielsen now for things for Saturday. So he goes over the things, maybe 25, 30 minutes, me and Gaffer walk over and you look at, the, you go right down the corridor and there's a kid standing outside the gym. Could, but it's like a school kid with his hands behind his back, he's sitting at the class and he's like banging his bum off the wall. As you're getting closer, Dean Brett's standing outside the gym. <laughs> Dino's like, Gaffer's like, fuck, here we go, what's happened here? And as you approach the gym doors, there's a big glass panel so you can see right in. The guy is absolutely thrown open these doors. The guy's a jobs <laughs> worth, by the way. You could just tell one of these guys that loved his job mm. what did you do the induction. Bear in mind, we're all been footballers, so we've all been to the gym about 100 times. But this guy, not we had to do the induction. So it turns out he's come through. Banging on the his doors. Mickey, I can't deal with this. I can't <laughs> deal with this. He's like, Mickey's like, what's happened? Dino's like, looking at him very sheepishly. I'm about to start laughing because that kid's something's been happening. It's going to be likely to be funny. <laughs> Dino's banging his bum off the wall, like looking up like a wee sky cool school kid. And he's like, Tom O'Brien's about to bench press eighty kilogram and Dean Brett told his shots and spread his anus and sat on his face. <laughs> and he goes, Mickey, it's not funny, I'm talking bare ass here. I am talking bare ass. <laughs> so Dino has stood up, spread his cheeks and his his oh. his counting job and sat right down on Tom the back. Tom O'Brien with his bench press and, oh, and you know he's, he's like that guy's it he's come we'll just go across there and do a body circuit he's like, let's go oh some man brilliant why, guy honestly why does honestly, that not surprise guy. me oh hilarious so 
We just used to bounce off each other all the time, me and Dino. Oh, I can imagine the dressing room with you two, and it was a, an absolute riot. <laughs> <laughs> That's super, man. Brilliant. That was brilliant. My time at Cowden Beef was brilliant. You know, I'm still close to a lot of the fans there, and they gave me the platform to really get back on track and things like that. It's a team that, for myself, I, heal, I always hold close to my heart, and you know, and it's uh, fingers crossed over the next few years to get back to the right level they deserve. Ah, fingers crossed, I'm sure they will. As we said, they're in good hands under Callum, so yeah. I'm sure they will. Right, so you obviously mentioned you had a really good spell at Cowden Beef. Um, prolific there, good goal scoring record, and you went on for Cowden Beef to have some spells at some some pretty decent clubs as well. Um, was it on Airdrie after? Airdrie, Airdrie after, and Airdrie's probably the biggest disappointment in my career. You know, it's it was a fantastic club. Um, and it was one of these things that I think it was like top goal scorer at Christmas and I think I only played about three games after Christmas so Jimmy Boyle signed me and me and Big Jim Lister were, were playing really well together and after that Gary Bowling came in because Jimmy got the bullet after that sadly and he, I just wasn't his cup of tea you yeah. know I think he wanted characters and things I think he runs his, his ship a bit different I think he probably maybe heard stories about him I don't know yeah. um, but Bobo took over and it just from there on, it kind of fizzled me out there. You know, I mean, it was um, uh, it was a bit of disappointing end to my career at Airdrie, but fantastic club, fantastic fan base. And you know, as a young manager now, who's younger than me, Reese McCabe, I know Reese quite well. It's I played against him a few times, and believe it or not, I played darts against him a couple of years back. Reese is um, is everything you want to be in a manager. The way he comes across is fantastic. His style of football nowadays is a new generation of football. Even look at the game last night where they beat by hearts, convincingly, yeah. But they fought for everything Aye. and they played the right way. And Reese is very similar to what I say is we'll stick to our guns when it comes to the style of play you want to play. And uh, fair play to him. I think he's going to be a massive manager in Scottish football. I totally agree. I think, Craig, I know you you have the same opinion. I, I think yeah. he's destined for big things. I, I said to yeah. I said to Craig before, I, um, you've obviously seen Airdrie a few times this season, Craig, and I, I mentioned to him that I saw his Airdrie team come to Bonnerig and play in the cup, and even on that pitch, he still had his team You'll playing. Play. He still had his team getting the ball down and playing. And to be fair, they were, right. they were they were a joy to watch. Um, aye, his team's play some some great football. Aye, he's, he's he's very mature in what he does as well. He's the youngest manager in Scottish in Scotland, I think, in general. I think, and he's one of them. But um, as a as a way he comes across, even his his post match interview last night, the way he talked about his players and. He's like, I'm not going to change my philosophy. And quite rightly so, you know, I think I've done it once. I took a heavy result against Tincastle and I went to all out attack, you know, a 9-0 game. It still haunts me to this day. But at the same time, I think about it, I, was, I stuck to my principles. We just never had the players at that time to play the style of football I want. It's, I don't know, first, I'm not completely happy yet, no. But, you know, I'm working towards that goal of playing the football style that I want to play. Nobody grew up wanting, this is no disrespect to the guy, nobody grew up as a centre-half wanting to be a Ross Tilkley. I'm sorry they didn't. You look at the players that want to play football. Nobody wants to chase a long ball. I grew up never wanting to chase a long ball. We all dreamed of getting nice football, playing a one-two, maybe smashing it in the corner. Aye. You're not going to do that chasing long balls all the time. You've got to play the nice football, and it makes you a better footballer, obviously, doing that. So I teach my boys how to play that way, well, the best I can. And um, I know for a fact it's slowly coming together, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm the type of guy who wants it done yesterday. Aye. I've just got to kind of rein it in a wee bit, Ryan. That's exactly that. That's it, mate. That's it. It'll, it'll come. Um, Gain, oh, just on Airdrie, actually. Gainey told me that he took you through to sign for Airdrie. So you gave him a pair he of did, boots. Aye. <laughs> That's right, aye. He never told you he stopped at Har Hill for a porno, though. No, he didn't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> he left that bit. <laughs> so, we're on the M8. We're on the M8. Driving through, and he's like, I just got to pop into Har Hill Services here. And I'm like, I think maybe he's what he fell up, and he's first there, so, you know, maybe he fell that big, massive crane on me. I don't know. So, Comes out, he's got a pepper army, he's got a Yorkie bar, he's got the old Lucas Aid Sports, and he's came out with this magazine. I'm like, he's bought him nuts at the time, it was like nuts or a, maybe a kid, 442 or something. He's whipped at this porno, like, and he's fucking through it like that. And I'm sitting there like that, listen, I'm about to make a deal here, I'm about to go <laughs> sign on up a contract. And big man, I thought the big man was going to start bouncing on his thumb like a human tooth <laughs> 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 It was absolutely brilliant. I'm like, all right, let's maybe just get ourselves a little of language here. Nah, but the big guy, the big guy's a diamond. You know, he's a character, a massive character, and uh, a right good lad is Gaining. Uh, he definitely left. He, he admitted to that 
that wee bit of detail when he told me about that. So you're trying to go and sign a contract to Airdrie and he's, <laughs> he's, he's stopping at Hart Hill for a scuddy. But... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, the guy thought it was the, the government and John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> the government and John Cena, tremendous. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, superb. I'm going to have to pull him up about that. <laughs> Class. Um, your next move, again, another, um, another big club, but on to Sterling Albion. After Sterling that. Albion is probably um, where I had my poorest kind of goal scoring form, but he's a complete player. I, like me and Gordon Smith, we still talk about this. Mm. I've, every, every for the first six months of that season, most of the goals came from myself. And was I was that, like, was I'm that not, not buffed. Was that Goggsy Smith? Smith? It was Goggsy Smith. Goggsy Smith was at Hearts and Stephen Dorans were the strikers at the time. And my goal record, I think I only got two or three goals the whole season. But I think my assists were like 13, 14 when we were bottom of the league. Mm. You know, so we always have this conversation like how many I assist you. I sort of say to him all the time and things <laughs> like that to, to Goggsy. But, uh, you know, as a striker, I judge them goals. It's as simple as that. Mm. I'm, I'm very much like, you'd be the best player in the whole world. But if your goal records at the end of the season don't show what they should, then to me, that's not a that's not a season, a successful season. Mm-hmm. Another club that's fantastic, well ran, you know, um, the guy, the lad Stuart Brown there, was a really nice guy, you know, it's a club that's very well, like Fourth Bank's beautiful wee place, you know, mm-hmm. if you want to go yeah. down and go to the cafe, you can go to the, you get membership for the gym and that, but as a player, it was a lovely little place to be, you know, it's a time that I don't look back with bad memories, I just more wish I could have gave them goals to maybe push them up the league a wee bit more. If I completely made this up, but I'm sure I read... I'm going to look stupid if this is wrong, but did you go in goals? I saved a penalty. penalty. I saved a penalty, aye. I thought I read that. Listen, I thought the highlight of my career. (laughs) You know what I mean? So I think it was 4-3 down and uh, Callum Leadford gets sent off. I think, and here we go. I've seen this in movies before. (laughs) You know, Declan McManus is on his hat-trick and sometimes I comment on when you put his stats and stuff, he never never scored it to me. The video's on YouTube. It's a a wee video uh, and it's... uh, Declan's on his hat check. I think it was Morton we were playing at the time. And um, he puts me to the right and I just chuck myself right across and I tip it around the post. <laughs> you know, the only, the only downside was I wish it was maybe to get a point or three points. Nah. But, you know, it's uh, it's a penalty save. So I've got a better record than half of the great goalies i played with. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. They can't take that off you. <laughs> no, they can't. <laughs> um, and then after Stirling, it was on to Arbroath. Was that? Arbroath, my head was Ar- completely gone by then. Under Aye. Todd Lumsden and Hizzy, you know, I remember the time, and I think Andy Mundo talks about this story all the time. Todd's taking our team talk, and the next time a big cloudy smoke comes out in nowhere, and it's me and my vapor. Like, <laughs> it's not professional at all, like, but my head was gone. And he goes, Lewis, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's doing the action. I like, well, Gaffer, now you know your smoke, there's no secrets anymore. You know, it's just it's something you shouldn't say to your Gaffer, Aye. you know, but it was, and it just it kind of summed up the kind of. State I was, I was kind of fed up with football by then, and mm. it was totally not nothing to do with that. But I should never have done it. I took a contract away from somebody that probably wanted to stay in the game, or maybe a young kid. So it's probably selfish from my point of view. So I only stayed for a couple of months, and then I left. See, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but during your time at Abroth, you would have played against Hearts in the Cup at Tynecastle, is that right? I should have scored. Remember, we won the lap, Goldie scored. Then Ben Ostert missed. Slipped, and I hit the clip to post it. And I, it, was a, it was a day that my daughter was born. I'd right. been like in hospital all day, so I barely yeah. slept. And those tucks slipped on the ball, and I smashed it from the 18 yard box and it just clipped the post. So it would have put us 2 0 up. And I think one man went on and scored a couple after that. I was so wanted to. I can vaguely remember the game, and I'm, I'm, I'm positive if you were I got playing. I got an innovation when I came on, when I came off, actually. It was one of the highlights of my career. The Hearts fans said, I was in New York, the Hearts fans, a big bit mm-hmm. of paper up before it, and I got some innovation for both. For both rounds coming up, and I think we knew that I'd been through like a, a long pregnancy and kind of thing as yeah. well. So I think they just appreciated the effort I put in. That must have been a, a nice touch and nice memories. It's nice. It would it's have been nice would have been, it? been nice if you got your goal, but to play to play it's, at Tyne Castle. But as I say, I played at Tyne Castle a few times over my career with Hearts, yeah. and that was the first time I played against Hearts. You know, so um, no, it was a uh, it was a great moment. You know, and uh, uh, that was it was my moment to have basically cement myself as in something I've probably actually done in the game or achieved really much was score against the Hearts but at the same time um, I was just happy to be on the park to be honest Again there's no many a lot of Hearts fans would um, give everyone to be in that position to actually go and run, no, kick a ball at Tyne Castle so. Listen I was, that's exactly it you, you count your blessings sometimes 
Not a good, good best player, but you know, I count myself one of the luckiest. Absolutely, mate. You mentioned there that obviously your your head was gone at Arbroath. Um, was it after Arbroath that you signed for Nitton? I signed for Nitton just to basically, a couple of my pals were playing there and I got paid quite well, to be honest. And uh, totally the wrong reasons for any young kid that I want to go play junior football. Don't think of the money, think of your progression. Mm. Especially nowadays because there's no money in Scottish football. You've no. got to look at the lower leagues. Yeah, so I went there like Craig Thompson and things were there at the time and big Kieran Renton and Chris Renton and things. And it was a good club to be at. I just, I was so far away from wanting to play football that my game yeah. just kind of affected and I just my, I became a bad egg and my attitude completely went. You know, so the guys that I had to give my, try to give my second chance in the football actually, uh, I pissed right up the back really when you think about it and it's not great, but I was a completely different person to what I am now. And it's, uh, I think you need to make these mistakes sometimes to make the right wrong, you know. It's all about just learning curves and that, isn't it? So well, exactly. you it's learn from your mistakes. And, yeah, of course you do. Um, after think after knitting, did you again have a wee spell in amateur? Just did you, was just it helping teams got, was out? It, you played Gorgie for Gorgie Hearts, Gorgie Hearts, Hearts eh? on the Sunday. Yeah, my pal at random, you know, my friends. So kind of helped them out there. You know, a great team as well. Like it's, as I say, it was just a group of lads that were all pals playing football on a Sunday and enjoying themselves. I was going so to say probably, that, you know. I was going to say that you obviously you said you were at a period in your career where you just you weren't enjoying it at Arbroath and that and when you took that sort of step down and, and you were helping out the mm. amateur teams and just having a kick about with your pals basically did, did you kind of get that I, sort of I got that feeling again a hundred percent Ryan you know it's uh, it's like anything it's obviously uh, they maybe needed me but I probably needed them more than anything else you know I needed mm. that release to go play now now that I'm at an age where I'm struggling to get myself fit and things like that I probably if I did get myself I have one last bite I just played football again mm-hmm. especially helping out Penny Cook and things like that but you've got to have that hunger Ryan you know it's Aye. one of these things Craig as well you'll see it through in the West and things like that when you go watch games in the West like the young kids come in they're thirsty they're hungry Aye. I'm not going to be this guy at 35 year old now to take that chance away from a kid mm-hmm. just to try and prove to myself to do it my life's so much more than that now like uh, as much as I love, I never really watch football to be honest. I watch it now more as a manager than I did as a player. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like you can go down to the park at Clemiston Park on a Sunday and you can watch an under nine game and you can still take something away from that game that you can maybe learn. Aye. And that's that's the beauty of having football in your life. It's things like that. I appreciate a lot more of what I've got now mm-hmm. in my life rather than what I've, when I was going through my playing career. That's good. And what was the uh, what was the sort of gap in time from? when you sort of left that and you were helping out with Gorgie Hearts to, to the, when you then got the Edinburgh United job? It was about a year and a half or a year or something like that. As I say, I was only helping out Kev and I kind of just sort of take training on a Tuesday, Thursday, you know, things like that. Then took the game on a Saturday and we nearly hit promotion. I only played, I took four games. Mm. But um, I took, uh, took a couple of games and we had a, a silly result away to Dalkeith, which stopped the promotion. And, I say to Kev at the start of the last season, uh, the season that I did take the job, I was like, give me a chance at it. Kev goes out, if you want a chance at it. He's done it with Callum Elliott. He's mm-hmm. done it with, he's got a, a great, Edinburgh United is a lovely club, by the way, it's a gold mine waiting to blow. It is, it's right in the heart of Edinburgh. Yep. You know, see if it gets a little licky paint and a little wee makeover, that club can go massive, you know, because mm-hmm. it's right in the heart of Edinburgh. It's a great area to be in. And uh, Kev puts a lot of hard work into the work he does there. And, for my, for my sake, I'm always still involved with the club and it's uh, more of a youth side of things where I, I look over a, a couple of teams and do team sessions and that with them. But I was, if it's not Penny Cook, then I always look to Edward United, what was their score and things like that as well. So going for a wee bit of sticky time just now, but when uh, Nizzy coming in now, you know, get his stamp his authority and I think they'll be fine. Aye, they've, they've got a good track record. They're bringing players through as well, obviously. I mentioned Guyney was captain there. Yeah. Another, another player that I spoke to recently... Um, that played for Edinburgh United, Sonny Swanson. Sonny told me a story that um, he's played White Hill. And you said that if if he's beat White Hill, I'll pay for the entire squad to go to Newcastle. <laughs> go to Newcastle, I must have had money. Son, Sonny said to no, they, played, they played Haddington. It was, was, Addington, it Addington, was it Addington? Addington. Uh, I got sent. I got sent off after thirty minutes. I got the first line. <laughs> and I think Sonny had the worst game of his career, probably. <laughs> so, I'm yeah. joking. Sonny said to me that you you said if he's if he's beat them, I'll pay for the entire squad to go to Newcastle. And I think when he's one 0 up, and Sonny said he turned round and he just saw you on the on the sideline. Just you, you were just like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no this is going to be the day. 
So if we want, if we had him, it would have guaranteed us to get into the the playoff position. So mm. I thought, dangle the carrot for the lads, you know. No. Uh, we went one up. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I can just <laughs> see my pockets. There's me just zipping up my pockets like that and trying to like, get away. But you know, um, no, it's, it's the things you do for these players. I'm one of these managers. Because I've had a lot of managers maybe shunt me in the past, I'm not like that. I kind of put my arm around the boys. It's probably why I'm quite affectionate and quite a precious personality I've got. I look after my boys. That's one thing every club will say to me is the way I am with my boys. I look after them off the pitch just as much as I do on the pitch. And it's uh, the family feel that you've got to have. And it's one I will continue all the way through my managing career. I think you get the best of the boys when you get that respect from them. You can tell that in like your... Your post-match interviews and that at the moment with Pennycook, even when things aren't quite going as well as you'd like, you could tell you you never you never throw anyone under the bus. So no, you're you're, you're Listen, on it together. So I, my team talks are very simple. The depth and when the, the strategy things, yeah, are the positionally quite strict, yeah. But my team talk stays the same. Go out there, make as many missed passes as you can. Go make as many missed chances. Cross balls at the box. Miscommunicate. I don't mind that. That's a part of football. It's how you respond from that. I will, I will always say to my boys, I don't care about how many mistakes you make on the pitch. Just don't you ever come off the pitch as one of my players not giving 100%. Because 100%, Ryan, Craig, is all you can give in football. Yeah. And as exactly. those times that I've never gave 100%, I've came off and said, I wish I could have done that. Don't have that. I don't want to be a manager that endorses that either. I want to be a manager that says, you know what, I'll give all my boys to play with freedom. I want my defenders to play through the lines. I want them to get play. I want them to feel the pressure that striker up them to go play the pass when they can under pressure. Because I know Craig Thompson can head the ball in for a park and defend. I know Daryl Doss, eh, big Daryl Young can do that. I know Andy Forbes can do that. But let's try and make them a better player, whether they're 34 year old, 35, 32. I still believe I can make them better by learning the, the true art of playing football. And that mm-hmm. is, let's make PT the player that can go on and dribble out and maybe find that ball and step, step into the middle of the park and intercept. And that to me is making my job, my job. Mm-hmm. As I say, that's all I'm looking for. My my job this year is to get stability of Pennycook. I think you've heard about the stories about Pennycook. It was in a real bad place. Aye. That was phase one was to get stability in the club and we've got that. I've got a fantastic chairman, I've got a fantastic club that I work with and that's one thing I will say about Pennycook, whether they fire me tomorrow or whatever. That club has made me and my assistant Gav feel more at home than anything else. That club deserves everything for me and Gav and we do that. I do sometimes, I do 16 hours a day just working on things because that club deserves that. Um, it's a great club about the place. The boys, I'm blessed to work with some great players and I'm really close to my boys. And it's a it's a, a net that I want to keep. So my phase one of getting that harmony and getting the stability in the club is there. Um, the next one is to be secure. It was this mm-hmm. season for me was all to be secure in that league. We're going through a hard time just now, of course we are. We've got a really young boys. We've not got the biggest budget in the league. You know, but I know for a fact that my boys can go on their day compete at the highest level. Broxburn on Saturday, take for instance, going in there, you know, first half of were a bit underperforming. Broxburn were fantastic. Could have been two or three up, of course they did. Then the goal they did score was just a sheer instinct and for Big Errol, he flicks yeah. around the corner. Second half and Billy McPhee, Pitts will tell you this is sell. They were probably lucky to get away with a point. I've got to get away with three. But that's football. You know, there's going to be games where you're going to have that. And that's the side, that's a team that's probably going to go win the league now because of these points they're picking up. And yeah. you need that luck. But to come off that park on Saturday, I, I was on, I was suspended, I was in the stand. I gave my boys a standing ovation coming off because I was so proud of them. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm learning every day. I'm making mistakes more than they are. But you know what? I'm excited. And I'm going to give them my all. It's simple as that. I can only give it my all. It's a redemption story for me. It totally is. I, 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 this is what it is. And it wasn't until a couple of weeks ago somebody said to me, Jen, it's a redemption story. And thinking back, I forget, fucking is a redemption story. A, a game that gave me so much. No. Gave me so much to the platform to go be better, and I've never done it due to my choices. I've got to give something back to the game that gave me something, and I want to do that for Pennycook, and I want to do that for the group of boys I've got in that junior room just now. So it drives me on every week. Now, listen, Pennycook, you, you, you took the words out of my mouth in terms of when you came in, it was a difficult time. The club needed stability, they had went mm-hmm. a, bit of, a lot of upheaval, and yeah. it, it's, clear, it's clear to see that. You're you're bringing that. Well, you you brought that, and you're continuing to bring it. Um, mm-hmm. You you're working with a really young squad, so naturally that's going to come with with some inconsistency. Um, of but certainly, I I came along and watched the Tynecastle game uh, a few weeks ago. You probably said yourself, you's in the first fifteen twenty minutes. I thought 
He's looked really good. Could be four or five. Could, could be four. We're going to go one four or five. Aye, and then it kind of it kind of dropped a bit, and and the performance the levels probably went. They went down to ten men. I think the game changed. Aye. I think if they keep eleven men on the part, right, and I think we would have yep. won that game. Aye. Uh, what I did do is Rob's very good at getting a lift out of his players, mm. and when they went down to ten, they started to work hard together. Then probably by the end of the game, we were maybe a lucky escape would get just a point. Yeah. I that's a team that team Sorry, five mate. five months ago they took nine off us. Exactly. You know, we've been to soccer, we beat soccer, we went to Dunbar, beat Dunbar. Mm-hmm. We've we've had massive results this season. Hundred percent. It's the it's not going to happen every week. I'm going to lose a lot of games, but I'm going to win. We've only had like two draws this season mm-hmm. because of the style of play. I do go and help go and And on Saturday, I went. I ended up with five strikers in the park because I needed to get that point. I'm not going to go sitting and be happy with one 0 I lost no. a loss, but it's nine or one. It's exactly. as simple as that. My philosophy will not change. Just like what he says, I will try and play football the right way. And I will try and get three points. Point for me is a point. Three is what you play for. And listen, with, with that sort of mentality and attitude, and the Pennycook fans seeing that that's what you're trying to do at the club, mm-hmm. they're going to appreciate that. So if if you're losing, if you're losing games now and again, like that game at the weekend, a narrow loss to the team that, like you say, is are going to go on and win that league probably. Mm-hmm. That, they're going to be more understanding on a Saturday if if you do get beat. Because you, yeah, can, see, you can see, you can see yeah, that, that you can see that there's progress, and you can see what you're working towards. And it's just, it's just about that time. You said like your first season, your goal was to kind of just stabilise the team and and mm-hmm. make them secure, and that's happening. So you've obviously you brought in some uh, some good players as well. You brought the boy yeah. uh, Ben Wardlaw from Edinburgh United, eh? yeah, brilliant player. Most of them, fourteen goals, uh, nineteen year old he is, nineteen Aye. year old. But most importantly, away from that, from the the player that you see in the park, as a kid, Ben is, and he wouldn't be in my club if he was. It wasn't. He's a diamond, a kid. Mm-hmm. He's emotional. He wants to get better. I've got a full group of boys. Paul Thompson is a. See, when I say to people, when you look at football players, who you should, who you should grow up with, what would be like? I'd say Paul Thompson. Yeah, mm-hmm. the guy's a diamond. He does anything for you. Yep. And he forms the exact same battle. All my senior members of the squad, some of all fantastic with my young boys. All it's perfect for me. So when people say you came into a shit show and things like they do, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. No. And it's down to folk like that. They help Ben. I've got Scotty Tom. I still believe I've got the best midfield in the league in there with Scotty Taylor. He's been out injured. Um, oh, had a ter- terrible, brilliant player. Had a terrible injury last year. Lucky to be alive. The guy played three months for me and Gav, needing an operation again, and just put it off until last month. How can I? How can I fathom that? He's, he's not playing at SPL. He's not playing that. He's playing. He's playing in the Premier League of East of Scotland football, and, and that kid wants to go in and play a penny cook every week. So I must be doing a good, a, a job enough, a good enough job to have that kind of fight. But as I say, I've been blessed to work with some great, great characters, some great uh, football players. But most importantly for me, Ryan Craig is, I, I work with some great guys day in and day out, and that's that for me is a job that I'll continue to do until the days change. Do you think, obviously, the transition from like player to manager, it's not easy. Do you think you love the game more now than you did as a player? 100% Craig. 100% pal. Now, the only problem I have sometimes is something probably what Penny could needed at the time was someday not just to come into his office and go right to the office, right boys out for training. I'm not that type of gaffer. I'll go and laugh and joke with the man at the mm-hmm. the boys in the changing room. And the boys can see me and respond to that. Maybe in time when I get a bit more serious, maybe I have to take that step back. But right now, Pennycook need that kind of gaffer in there to do that. Um, but I love it. I love doing it with the boys. You know, it still gives me that kind of sense of being in the changing room with them and things like that. Um, as I say, it's it's hard because you can no longer help it when you pick your team and you do your transitions and things like that. I still think I can give something to the boys in the park, but my legs are maybe telling me otherwise. You know, my mind's still there. Mm-hmm. My level of belief that I could be is still there, but my body tells me otherwise. It's the disappointment of not being able to help them on the park. So I'd, I'd kind of work as double as hard off the park to make sure I do my job off it. And that's what is, Craig. You get a lot of, and I'm going to keep saying it now, managers will continue to get younger and younger. We're in a new generation of the style mm-hmm. of player. It is. It's the style of management we get now is getting younger and younger. And you're obviously going to get your, your warm-ups and things like that. And you like to Jimmy Nichols and Dick Campbell's characters in the game that will keep a job. And so they should. But you're going to get young managers coming through and... I saw something the other day, and this is a wee bit off top, but I'm not one that believe in a manager that's never played football taking a job. I know like the book smart. And this is us, Craig, and this is what it is. It's, you don't want a manager who's just studied football. You have to have played the game. Aye. You have to have relied on that 
instinct you've got to do. I always think to myself, if I'm putting a session, I would have enjoyed this as a player. Mm-hmm. They don't get that experience to do that. And I think somebody said that, one of the one of the famous guys said that the other day, they're one of the top managers said, I think it was, was it Warnock or something maybe, said that, or Harry Redknapp was talking about it, he was talking to this guy, 28-year-old, or manager of a team, and he goes, oh, what position do you play, mate? He goes, oh, I never played. So how can he relate to what he's going through in the park? You know, you've got to have had that, whether it's playing at juniors, whether it's playing at a top amateur or whatever it is, you have to have that feeling of being a football player. And I've, and you think you've probably heard about my, my interviews and the way I've talked about the referees. Who are the best referees in, in football just now? Are the ones that what? Play the, the one, game. The ones that play oh, the game. Of yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, and there's no, there's no coincidence. No. Sean Murdoch. Sure. Ex- he's he's one of brilliant. He's Murdoch. absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. Why is he fantastic? Because yeah. he understands where the players yeah. are coming from. Yep. Yeah. And I keep saying yeah. it, and I keep saying it, and I won't batter my head about it. I don't care if I get in trouble for it. The arrogance in some of the officials are embarrassing. Yep. See, if you make a, if I make a mistake on the side of the park, and I scream at the, the referee, bear in mind, my job's on the line. He collects his money, he goes away, he cuts it off. I don't get that release at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. His, his day stops at five o'clock, and he picks up another game next week. Mm-hmm. It could be my last game. And this is where it annoys me. See if, and 100% of the time, if he comes over and explains to me, I'll go like, ref, how could you not see that? He goes, Lewis, I thought he pulled him back, so the advantage got played, and this is what happened. I put my hands up and I go, right, mm-hmm. thank you for explaining me. Yep. It's the arrogance, the ones that tell you to get away. Do you want to go for an early show? It boils your bugs. They're yep. forgetting you're fighting for everything. They're efficient again, man. Some of them, I just think, I'm just trying to get in the house because they don't speak in the house. And that's what it feels like sometimes. Yeah. Sean Murdoch's now doing it. More, I think more players will go into the referee side of it and they'll be the better referees because they've played at that level. 100%. It's having that understanding how, like, the likes of Sean Murdoch will have that understanding of like, how you're feeling on the touchline, where like, where you're yes. coming from and they'll speak to you and give you that respect and like you said, see if they, yeah. get, a de- see if they get a decision wrong or... You kind of didn't respect or, them a wee bit more. I or... No, it might not necessarily be wrong, but see if they come over and explain the logic for that decision, then you can learn with it because if you, if he's maybe made a mistake or he's maybe not seen it. He's only human, the guy. Aye, you know what I mean? Exactly. It, that's exactly it. So if you come over and he says, I thought it was this, then I put my hands up and say, That's fair enough, sir. That's fine. If you thought it was that, that's fair enough. Yeah. Ones that come over and refuse or blank you, Aye. or just blank you, like they just they want it all to be about them. I'm not a big fan of that, and I'll continue to keep arguing with it. Maybe the way I got about it, I'm making it in because I was giving too many reds for it just now, but I'll continue in my post matches and every interview I do to see why I do that. No, I love yeah, that, I love that honestly. A lot of the referees, they would probably get less of a hard time if they were more open and honest. Exactly. Maybe they like it, maybe easier, like it to be all about them, Craig. I think they maybe like it all about them. Aye. Yeah. You know it's, uh, <laughs> and that's, that's the fine line you've got to do now. They're going to make mistakes. Of course they are. I make mistakes on the side of the park. Players make mistakes. Referees are going to make mistakes. You maybe have to explain it. And I, like I do it to my boys and my boys explain it to me. Referees just get this at the end of the day and that's it. Aye. Yeah. I just can't get over that. Just have a bit of common decency. As a human being, just to speak to somebody and explain your decision. Yeah. It's, it baffles me sometimes. No, I totally, totally understand where you're coming from there. But I keep keep uh, keep up with your, your honest interviews and that and Hopefully, hopefully people see the game. Exactly. People see it. So why hide it? Ah, I, was, yep. I think we're unlucky here. If you made two passes, you get punished for it. Tell no. them. Yep. I'm not going to kill my boys for it. You've seen it. I saw it. They've seen it. Just be honest with it. I think that's why I got a lot of the, the praise and things as well, because of the honesty in the, in the post-matches. And I'll continue to be that. I've, listen, there's too many liars in the game nowadays that you don't have to lie. You just see it. Call it how it is. And that's, that's probably why it is. I've only been myself. That's it. Well, it's just before we sort of wrap up, there was one thing that I wanted to... <clears throat> could, couldn't have you on and not mention this, because me and Craig have spoke about how good this is a lot of times, but... Scottish Cup. Scottish Cup picture, is that the one you got? I thought you were going to say Scottish, oh, no, I was, the Scottish Cup. I wasn't, I, was, <laughs> I wasn't actually going to mention that. I totally oh, forgot about that, but I take, oh. <laughs> I take it I that's one that you, by the way. That's the, one the you like to... Bullshit. By the way, that was in middle of yeah. December, by the way. That covered up an egg was that against uh, Hibs, Lewis? Hibs, aye. That yeah. was a 5 1 season. By the way, Greg Stewart scored after 12 seconds that day. And it was uh, Owen Doyle's debut. Sparky sticks in a world day for about 35 yards. Um, and on another day, we got, it was 3 2. And Hibs got to the final that season. You know, it was, uh, it was a great wee day out. And 
it's a bittersweet thing because I lost in the cup to Hibs, but then I got to see my team smash them in the final. You know, Aye. it's probably it gave me the biggest day out, Ryan. Probably you understand as well. It's a uh, the most nervous ninety minutes ever, but I would have would have swapped it back then in a heartbeat. Aye, but when I look back at it now, then you've got to obviously understand what it's obviously done for my for my love of tarts. Hundred percent, mate. What I was actually going to mention was uh, flamingo cam. <laughs> I fell. That's. I fell. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Tell you what, it's a penalty Rangers. <laughs> that's, um, and that's just absolute genius. Uh, that that sort By of feature. Way, of the, could the, you imagine? Could you imagine what is actually said during the dugouts, though? If they didn't actually kind of take the, the thing out of it, you know what I will say is, though, Doogie Penman, who works for the club as does a Hibs woman, he's yeah. absolutely fantastic at his job. Aye. Cameras from all angles and things like that. He's uh, and the flamingo cams took off really well, and it's. Uh, Brilliant. I do get a wee bit. I love it, especially the soccer game. The soccer game was brilliant. That was tremendous. But the one, uh, the one where they we played Dal Kiefer, I went to shell the ball back to the goalie. <laughs> I just went rip me. I had to be took three kneecaps out there. I never liked <laughs> just the two. But uh, no, it's listen. I'm all. If anything to benefit the uh, the profile of Doogie's job and what it brings to the club as well, I'm happy to keep going with that. As I say, I think there should be a. I don't like the fact like sometimes managers distance himself from the community side of things. Mm. I'm not a big fan of that. I think. Um, Make yourself open and people will come to you. You know, it's like before every game, there's a the Bunnett squad that stand by the goal. Like the guys are like they're in their eighties and nineties. I don't go. I don't go off the park without speaking to them after the warm up. Mm-hmm. You know, it opens yourself up and you ask them how they are because these guys are dedicated their life to going to watch Pennycook. Now, the most loyal fans I've noticed in football are the ones that go to like to Stony Burns and fall fall houses and things like that. That's what makes a football club. They deserve days like this. So if they want to come over and ask questions here. Don't be the arrogant guy like you see in the referees sometimes. Be the honest guy in the management because they'll see through your bullshit. Aye. And that's one thing I won't continue to do as well until I get told otherwise. To mind you, things that go by cell, they don't want to speak to me sometimes. <laughs> 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 that's a part of managerial, isn't it? Aye. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, hopefully, come the end of the season, we'll have a few more uh, a few more good celebrations on the Flamingo camp. Um, like that socky yeah, one, guys. But... That's always the plan, you know. And it's, I'd like to see you both at Perry Cook, and we'll get we'll go into the bar after, and we'll have a couple of drinks, and uh, we'll get a good wee chat, catch and chat up for that one. Tell you most stories, maybe off camera <laughs> rather than <laughs> off camera. But, um, no, guys, it's been an absolute mate. diamond. It's been brilliant. No, thanks very much for coming on, mate. Absolute top man, legend. Listen, it's, um... it's been all my pleasure, guys. I've really thoroughly enjoyed last hour, and uh, it's great to see your show doing well. If there's anything I can do to promote, it, guys, don't be hesitating to give me a wee message. I'm always happy to help out. Oh man, Lewis, I appreciate that. And look, Penny Cooker, no and Penny Cooker in great hands. Um, and we both wish you all the success. Um, and I will we'll be, we'll be along. In, we'll be along in Monty Park soon. Thank you guys, and uh, thank you for the kind words. All the best, yeah. these are right. Thanks, oh, Lewis. Speak to Cheers, you soon, guys. Thank Craig. Cheers, all thanks. Bye. Bye. Cheers, guys. Yeah, so we hope you enjoyed the interview. Um, with Lewis Colt. Um, we certainly did. Fantastic stories. He's a great guy, isn't he, Ryan? Fantastic. Aye, Top man, top character. He's obviously he's he's, he's renownedly known for, for being sort of that flamboyant character and but you can you you see him during that interview he's got a serious side as well and he takes his job extremely seriously. Um and I think Penny Cooker oh, they'll they'll go places under Lewis. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as you said, <clears throat> in safe hands. So yeah, I guess as we, we wrap up uh, the show, so what games have you got? Lined up this weekend, Ryan. It's another Friday night one at Meadowbank, Leaf against Blackburn. Uh, so that's a Friday night. So looking forward to that. Um, Leaf obviously in really good form. So see if they can get another win. And the Saturday, I think the one I had penciled in was Whitehill Dunapace, uh, just at Ferguson Park. I've not seen Dunapace this season, so quite fancy seeing them. So I think I'll go to that one again. Weather dependent. Don't know what the weather's going to be like, but aye. what about you? Um, so just just the one non-league game, but yeah, it's Tuesday night, uh, Kelty Hearts versus Edinburgh City. Uh, Kelty Hearts fairly local, so 30, 40 minutes on the bus, so should be good. And um, I, I think I've said it before, I maybe have the social club is unbelievable at Kelty Hearts. Wow. It's worth the visit for that alone. So right. yeah, I definitely have to do that. Friday night. Uh, championship football, um, Rafe Rovers versus Dundee United. It's one that I've I've yeah, I've had the, in my calendar for a while, so I'm looking forward to seeing them play each other, uh, top two in the league. Uh, and then Saturday, 
much like yourself, very much subject to the weather. If it's anything like last Saturday, it will not go ahead. Um, but Thornton Hibs versus Edinburgh South, um, I've been meaning to go back um, to watch Thornton Hibs again at Memorial Park. They've been, you know, in incredible form and I've not seen Edinburgh South yet. So, you know, I planned a few weeks back they were going to play uh, Preston Athletic and a friendly, but it fell through a couple yeah. of times. So I've, I've still been trying to see them and I'll, um, hopefully that game goes ahead and I can check at Edinburgh up. South. So I think that game, I think there'll definitely be goals in that game for sure. Oh. Um, I think it'll be a, a cracker, but I'm just like, you know, praying to the gods that the weather calms down. I bet it's not looking good at the moment, but we'll see. Fingers crossed. Was it was it Fortnite Hibs, the one that you went to, it had the big fish tank? The bar, yeah. So there's the a, a local boozer, I can't remember the name of the bar, it'll come back to you, but it's right next to the ground and they've got the TV above a fish tank. And the first that was the first time that I'd been in a bar that had a fish tank, but um, if you go to Whispers in Trinent, they have a fish tank as well, right. but it's not below the TV. It's it's yeah. in the middle of the bar, but yeah, the, it's 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 a cool uh, it's a cool boozer. They've got the 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 bar owner is really nice, and um, I think they normally have the Celtic games on. I'm assuming he's a Celtic fan because they, they have them on all the time. But no. um, yeah, looking forward to going back there, and um, he always has the um. He has the heating on full blast in there as well, so it's good to get a heat once in a while. You know what I mean? Superb. I hope that game's on, mate, because that'll be a cracker. Yeah. I, I really, really hope it is. It's, I'll be gutted if it's not, but yeah, uh, hopefully that one survives. Um, but yeah, we we hope everyone's enjoyed um, this week's episode. Um, you know, it was an honour to have um, Lewis Colt on, uh, our second guest, and as I say, we will continue to try and bring guests on when we can. Um, I hope that everyone that has got games lined up manages to at least go to one or two of them, <laughs> weather dependent. And uh, again, just um, thanks to everyone that's been sharing our videos. Yep, much appreciated. Perfect. So until next week, guys, we'll catch you soon. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Great.